So welcome back. I just wanted to touch over a couple things on this PowerPoint. Um, I don't want to PowerPoint you to death, but I do want to highlight a couple things to think about as you're approaching this uh, project. So the very first thing to think about, and there's a quote, if you scroll to the second slide that says, when you photograph people in color, you photograph their clothes. But when you photograph people in black and white, you photograph their souls. And this is just a really powerful quote. Um, basically when you take color out of the equation your photographs are really going to start to tell um, a really great story because we no longer are relying on using color just to give us that information um, we we get more emotion it seems like because of the um, simplicity of the values makes us focus a little bit more on what's going on um, one person I did not talk about, my absolute favorite black and white photographer is Ansel Adams. It's A-N-S-E-L and then Adams, A-D-A-M-S. And he um, is no longer alive, but he did some beautiful black and white images of landscapes. So if you are interested, definitely look him up. It's, it, it's They're beautiful. When you guys are taking pictures, this hopefully isn't anything new. Hopefully this all looks familiar. Um, composition, we've been talking about this all semester. That is really the biggest thing I want you guys to think about every project, how you're laying it out. And when we think back to those elements of photography, again, um, sometimes I refer to them as elements of design, when you have a, a picture that's really strong in line or really strong in shape or maybe symmetry, toning down that color, taking it to black and white is really gonna highlight those elements and it's gonna completely transform. You can see this picture um, of this wheel, you know, <laughs> because I don't have the blue of the sky distracting me or maybe the carts are red, you know, I stop focusing on those little details and I look at that giant shape that's happening. Same thing happens with expression. You can see this picture of a child here. Um, I'm no longer trying to guess, you know, like, oh, look at how great this bright pink headband is paired with this dark blue dress. You know, I stop looking at those little details. Instead, I'm just making more eye contact with her. Um, you know, we really connect, um, especially at this angle um, with those focus on the eyes, because again, I'm not looking at those other colors. Texture is also a great example. Texture, texture, text, texture. Um, it's everywhere. Tree bark, carpet, um, rust on a shed, um, the maybe rust on the side of your car, um, the weathering of the wood on barns. Um, you know, it's everywhere. And when you take away color, you can really focus. You can see the ferns at the bottom. I really start to look at the shapes that are happening, um, the lines within the the ferns. So. Definitely, um, you can up that as well with more contrast. So again, um, lighter lights and darker darks when you edit them. Shadows. So here's the deal. Um, everyday life, <laughs> I might not pay too much attention to shadows, but you can get some really beautiful effects when you pair your image to black and white. So if I think about the shadows, you know, I'm looking at the window right now and it's, it's light. Um, you know, I think about that light, maybe three, four in the afternoon where I start to get some longer shadows. Um, I might take them for granted. I might not pay too much attention to them, but when I take a picture that has a great shadow in it and I take away the color, that shadow is going to start to become a really important visual element. Um, and you can see in the PowerPoint, it says the visual weight becomes more evenly distributed between the two. So dramatic drama, um, taking that and paring it down in black and white leads to some really interesting photographs. You can see again in this particular one, the shadow underneath the gate, because it's in black and white now is an essential part of the photograph before it was still there, you know, it's still there in color, but I don't pay as much attention to it because I had all of the other colors in the image to distract me. Um, you can look at the next two, um, talking about contrast in the subject and background and also high contrast lighting. Again, when I have a light sky and a dark foreground, it's going to increase um, more dramatic, more drama, um, the tension that's happening in the photograph. And in this particular one, it really brings out this idea of a silhouette where 
I can't see too many details of the people or the foreground. Obviously, there's, you know, there's some texture, but it's really toned down to be really just about the um, silhouette of the people and the landscape against that light gray sky. Um, and it, it makes them pop, you know, right now the people are in the center of that photograph and I can really focus on those people. High contrast light does the same thing, you know, on the days that the sun is out, which I know we're struggling through that, but um, when I am out in that midday sun and it is kind of like, it almost starts to bleach um, really light objects, taking a picture of that and transforming it into black and white or taking a black and white image um, is going to actually make that pop more. Again, I think about value, my white to black, they're on opposite ends of the value scale. The same thing happens with color. When I have really light colors or a bleached out subject, that's going to pop against a really dark subject. So I can use that to my advantage. I've already talked about your exercise. It's written down here. It's written on canvas. Um, you can use, again, turn them into black and white, start with a color image, or use selective color. And I have actually put an example of selective color on canvas. So if you have questions about that, let me know. And then the touch series, again, talked about that in a previous video. I just wanted to show you, um, these are, this is a student example. This is not my work. Um, and this is an example of um, a series of pictures that are telling a story. So I want to know more. <laughs> you know, I look at the image in the top left and these are all linked together. I see hands are in all five of these. That's what's in common with them. Um, and all these hands are touching something. But I want to know why. You know, that girl in the top left corner, she looks upset. She's sitting on the floor. She's grasping her legs. Um, why is she upset? What's what's going on? You know, what is the issue? Um, on the right, I switched to that image of the close up of the ear and the face and the hand is kind of tenderly caressing the face. Um, you know, is this a person that this girl has been hurt by? Is this a person that this girl, um, you know, is upset by? Um, is that her hand? Is that someone else's hand? There's a lot of questions that I start to ask myself when I look at these images. So I want to know more. Um, and each particular shot is focused either on a different angle of a hand or the hand is holding something different. Um, again, bottom right, I see the hands are touching this person's face. Who's this person? Is this a new person? Is this the person in the top left picture? Um, you know, now they're making eye contact with us. This is the only person that hasn't, or the only picture that has eye contact in it. So what does that mean? So you can start to set your pictures up so they tell a story. The very last slide is talking about setting those, changing those camera settings. I've also provided a link, um, but this is just written down. 